So a big three points for Sheffield United tonight. 2-0 winners over their playoff rivals, West Bromwich Albion, Billy Sharp, who else, with both. Kevin Gage and Rob Kozluk are here to discuss what we've just seen. Kev, you've just come from the commentary chair. Enjoy that. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Loved the result, obviously. Yeah. But it was, it, was, it was a good game without it being spectacular and full of chances. And I thought West Brom contributed you know, massively to that, to that good, good game. Um, they, were, they were the better side for the first 20 minutes. They really pressed us well. Obviously, the two, the two incidents in the first half, our goal, which was against the run of play, and the sending off completely changed the complexion of the game. But, oh, massive three points, huge three points. It did feel significant, didn't it? You could feel it in the atmosphere at the, at the end, the way the fans celebrated it. That felt like a statement win again. Yeah, we were all quietly confident, weren't we, at the start of the game and uh, the way the game went. Gage just spoke on, yeah, the 10 men uh, probably tightens West Brom up. So, uh, in a way, it's, it's a difficult night, but Sheffield United have found the way to get the three points and deservedly so on the night. It's that man again, Billy. I mean, we, we were talking before about where would United be without him right now? Obviously, they're more than a one-man team, but he is such an important part of it. It's incredible the season he's having. Nobody saw this coming, least of all Billy Sharp, probably. I mean, the first goal is typical Billy, isn't it? Just, just a half chance. Not a good ball from, uh, from ball, uh, Bulldog to him. Uh, and he's just spun again and just found the corner of the net via a deflection, but who cares? And the second goal, well, what a goal that is. I want to see it back again and again and again because, you know, I reckon we had 30, 40 passes. Started out on the left wing, just kept the ball. A few little triangles across the right-hand side. More of the same triangles, little give and goes. And then the finish from Billy was exquisite. Uh, just unbelievable. He's, you're right, he's the first name on the team sheet at the moment. He's undroppable. And with all these games coming, you can see him playing every single game this season. I think the manager will want to rest him, but... I'm sure, knowing Billy, he won't want Big to be on that bench. He'll want to play every single match. And he wants this contract. He's, he's been quite open about that. He wants it. Do you think they'll give it to him? There, there, there's no choice whether they've got to give it to him because what happens is he goes to another top six side within the championship or so and then his goals contribute to their, their tally. So you have to keep Billy Sharp at the football club. There's no question about it. But you're just running out of, of words to uh, describe him, aren't you? He just gets... Gets better. Well, I, I can't imagine United without him at the moment, to be honest. It's, well, it's no, hard to imagine a time when there is, and there will be one, yeah. but it's hard to imagine right now a United team without Billy Sharp around the place. Well, cer certainly at the moment, as I just said first name on the team sheet, and it, <laughs> he must be, he must be, you know, it's un unthinkable that he won't be up there leading the line. Um, I said a few weeks ago, I didn't see this happening for Billy this season. I thought it would be eased out, but I mean, tribute to his fitness mm. and his. his professionalism and everything you know he's been fantastic um, yeah I, I agree with Cosie give him the contract for God's sake <laughs> he'll be happy now like because his agent don't well, I well, well, at give the him start... the contract build the statue let's absolutely get it well the statue can come later on but at the start of the season it was all about the assists he was getting he said I'm not really bothered about assists I just want to be scoring goals so it's great to see him back in the scoring groove again what it does to the table though is interesting United one point off Forest who are in sixth. They're four points behind Huddersfield in fifth, but these games in hand are important. Two games in hand on Forest, three games in hand on Huddersfield that they play next. It's looking very, very healthy all of a sudden. Yeah, we mentioned the other week, we were laughing about it because you automatically uh, look at the games in hand and you give yourself six points if you've got two games in hand. You never think, <laughs> oh, I might only get three or four. It's like, yeah, six points takes us to there. Um, and it's important, we keep going on, don't we? It's important, but the games in hand are home games. It's crucial. You know, we've got all the top teams to come here and they'll be looking at the result tonight because they'll know, they'll know that West Brom are a tough team to play against and they'll, they'll go, bloody hell, Sheffield United have won again. Another three points, they're mm. on a roll. And once this club gets, gets this roller coaster going, you know, it goes really, really quickly, you know. We, we really get a head of steam going and we can really do some, some damage in, the, in that top six from now to the end of the season. And everybody's playing their part. I mean, there were four changes tonight. He's made little tweaks yeah. along the way. George Baldock was the big one coming in at left back. He did a, a commendable job tonight. And, th and that's the thing, isn't it? It is about the squad, especially in times like this, Rob, when there are so many games in a short space of time. Yeah, I think Eki's got the, uh, the options, has to change it? And it must be... Uh, Although it's bad for a manager to have so many options, isn't he? He'll be relishing within the thing. But 
if you ask Eki now about the league table and that, when he's taking game to game, you, you, you know yourself, he'll say, we're not looking at league tables within, in, within February, won't you? Because that's the way he works. But the momentum that Sheffield United are on, uh, they're, going to be, they're going to be there or thereabouts. One sour note of the evening, David McGoldrick going off and that injury didn't look great, did it? Yeah, that's a strange one because it mm. didn't look like he collided with anybody. There was no one around him, so you can only think some kind of muscular injury. Um, so obviously, you know, we're, we're going to need as many players as we can possibly get in the squad fit, you know, from now to the end of the season. But you know, on, on the flip side of that, we've got Gibbs White coming back on and yeah. looking like he's never been mm. away. So um, that's a light for light replacement. But obviously, you know, I hope Diddy's okay and and uh, it's nothing too serious. Feeling confident ahead of the Huddersfield game? It sets us up beautifully for the Huddersfield match, it really does. I mean, the, the players couldn't be any more confident after the run of results. And to beat one of your top six promotion rivals, you know, comprehensively, to be honest, at home, uh, is, is, is a great place to be. Fellas, thank you. Let's get reaction then from the Sheffield United boss, Paul Heckingbottom. It's a difficult game. Uh, didn't expect anything different from Steve. His team played against him a hell of a lot of times and know how he difficult he can make it and he's got a great squad of players there. So, yeah, difficult game. Uh, one I'm pleased to get out of the way. One we're pleased to get three points with. Um, and, and one, listen, there were some real pleasing bits in there. The, the bits where we dealt with their threats. So all their shots were from outside the box. Everything they threw in the box we dealt with first contact, second, which is a pleasing thing because it is tough to stop a team putting the ball in your box and we know how good they are at it and, and we came and stuck down there at the beginning of the season in that respect so yeah from that aspect really good. First 20 minutes seemed to be a real challenge for you I don't know whether it was the case or maybe both actually then being quite aggressive with the press but also you guys trying to figure out what their game plan was because to a certain extent you were unsure weren't you given Steve Bruce has only been there a few uh, days. Yeah so we, we had an idea to go to a back four this is, came out 4-3-3 three, three. so we, we can't really prepare for it in a week but we know I want to play against those sort of shapes, uh, but the press were good. They were intent on stopping us playing with the front three mm -hmm. stepping against our centre backs. Um, and, but we wanted to keep playing. Um, we gave it away a few times, but we needed to be calm because if you, if you look back then at the first goal, it comes from us playing and playing through it all because we want to be that team that can get quality ball into us front players, and both goals show that. Um, we know we're not going to get it right all the time, and at times we'll give it away. Um, but we want to play that way and make sure we get good quality into us front players. I think Cosley's been on the phone to Billy again, offering some advice on how to score a few goals, but he's clearly been listening, hasn't he? Yeah, I think, listen, <laughs> he's in a good vein of form. Uh, I've just spoke with him there after the game, literally as the whistle went. That's what happens when we can get ball into front players. So there's probably no one happier than him that we're trying to do that. Um, and he's getting the benefits of it and so is a team. Uh, but we've had other front players scoring as well and midfielders joining in. So, yeah, I'm not giving anything away saying we want to play that way. We do. Mm. Um, but like I said, there's more to it than just the two goals. We had to stand up to what they threw at us. Weren't pretty at times, we know that. But it's another clean sheet at home. Sending off? Right decision? Uh, I've just looked, yeah. Well, at the time, I thought it was a good tackle, I'll be honest. I thought it was just a really aggressive tackle. I've just been shown it and I'm not sure if he gets any contact on the ball. So if he doesn't, I can understand the ref. Uh, giving a red um, yeah but at the time I thought it was good when I've watched it back he's maybe got it right you're finding different ways to win we spoke about this a lot on the show tonight mm. it felt like at Fulham where you know you had to grind out results so a certain amount of pressure Peterborough you had to be patient even though you controlled yeah. the game um, Birmingham character to come from behind and again different circumstances tonight these are these are not easy games how, how pleased are you that you are managing to find these different ways to get the job done yeah over the moon with it because we're winning um, but it's a lot of work a lot of effort from the players this is a good group of players I think I said it from yeah. day one didn't I people might have been writing them off saying but I wasn't I've worked with them I know them um, and they're a good group of players so in my eyes we should be winning games um, but like I said we, the, the, my only criticism in the game today we knew they'd come out second half and be direct and play for set plays and we gave them that opportunity too many times not clearing his lines giving them the long throws and it allows them to build momentum and as I said when you're giving free kicks away or long throw you can't stop them putting it in your box um, and we didn't want the ball there we wanted to have the ball and, and play um, so yeah that would be my only criticism tonight George Baldock at left back why mm. was that? So we've, we've just been looking at it, obviously George is chomping at the bit to play, we're looking at how we're getting his goals and chances, 
and we haven't been getting enough first contacts from any good play down the left hand side. Um, so change, uh, the change was for that reason. Um, Reese has been doing well and been doing great in other aspects of his game, but we just thought we'd see how that worked. Uh, we got his goal down the left. I'm not saying it was brilliant, but we got his goal down the left, and we have been struggling in getting in good areas down there. And there's been not enough first contacts from crosses or passes. Um, so yeah, that was the reason. McGoldrick's injury didn't look great at the time. Yeah, obviously you don't like speaking before and same. Didn't look great. He's pulled up uh, with a muscle injury, so you, you know it's something. Uh, but we'll probably just have to wait and see what the scan says. Mm. Games keep on coming thick and fast. Mm. The table looks great. You'll probably say I'm not looking at it. I know for a fact oh, you're yeah. lying. Yeah, no, of course you are. Course One point of Forest, two games in hand, who are sixth, incidentally. Four points behind <coughs> Huddersfield in fifth, three games in hand. I mean, what an opportunity you've got to, you've got to admit. Yeah. It's, the window's open, isn't it, for you? Well, yeah, the and yeah, and the players have earned it. You know, no one's given us it. You've seen it tonight. Mm. The games aren't going to be any easier. We've got another six of the top top teams at home so there's going to be a lot of games like that where we're playing against the best in this league um, and we have to find a way to win we'll keep trying we'll keep doing it um, but the moment we come off it the, the moment we're not at as best in, in different aspects uh, we'll come unstuck against good sides but we've still got a lot of games left um, there'll be a lot of ups and downs on the way we all know that we'll keep a cool head keep playing and, and keep pushing and doing what we want to do and we'll not be far away well, Rob's very kindly offered to waive his fee for tonight to give you a few extra quid to put in front of Billy Sharp's <laughs> nose to get him tied down to a new contract. <laughs> On that... He must be getting some fee, <laughs> then, tonight, has he? He is. Yeah, good. Look at how he's week. dressed. <laughs> 50 quid a week, Sharp, won't take it. Is, is there anything you can say in it? Is there any movement? Do you know how that's going to pan no, out yet? No, no, I don't. Um, so from my point of view, Obviously, depending on what league we're in, budgets, finances, all that type of thing. Um, and we've got a few players in that position who, who, who I've spoken to, you know, and we'll have to just wait and see. We, we all know, Bill knows what I think of him. He, he makes it abundantly clear where he wants to play his football and that's here. Um, and he's doing the right way, he's going the right way. So, so will that decision be made at the end of the season? It's not likely No, it, it might not be the end. We'll wait okay. and see. Like, I, the one thing I'd never do to players is say something that I'd have to go back on, you know. And, and at the minute, I haven't got the tools, I haven't got the uh, information to, to make okay. any of those decisions. Well done tonight. Really Cheers, enjoyable. Man. Top Thank stuff. You. Best of luck for the weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. There you go. That's the Sheffield United manager, Paul Heckingbottom, <clears throat> reflecting on tonight's 2-0 win against West Bromwich Albion.